This is The Cliff Yates Show. Personal growth, motivation, inspiration, and philosophies for a great life. Hey everybody, welcome to The Cliff Yates Show. You are in the right place as always. And today, I want to go into some street survival tactics that we can use in light of what just recently happened. And today is the day that they had the mass shooting in in Maine. Over around 20 people were killed in this uh, active shooter mass, mass shooting. And so today I wanted to go into some street survival tactics, how we can survive an active shooter situation by employing some of the things that I learned in my 35 years as a police officer that I did habitually without really thinking about it. And you can yourself get these tactics habituated into your daily routine so that we're not operating out of fear. We're operating out of courage and we're going to go about doing our business, but we're going to do it tactically, tactically. We're going to do it with tactics and strategies that are uh, not paranoid, but they're just self-aware in some of those. So I'm going to give you four tactics right now today that you can employ. You can start to practice when you go out in public. They can help you and I survive an active shooter because waiting and relying on the police might be too late. So I've written down four things that we can do. And the first one is, let me give you the four that we're going to go over. We're going to go over self-awareness. We're going to go over location awareness. We're going to go over situation awareness. And we're going to go over pre-planning. When I talk about self-awareness, number one, self-awareness. Be, be conscious of where you are. When you pull into a parking lot, you're going to go into a building. Okay, where am I? This, where am I in relationship to this building? Where should I park? You know, maybe I should park off to the side. That way, you know, as a police officer, let's say we meet for coffee at a local 7-Eleven. We just don't blindly drive in. We, we may even drive by first and take a look in the inside. Is everything as normal? Is our, our customers going in and out as normal? Are we about to interrupt the robbery in progress? And now this doesn't overtake us and overwhelm us with, with, with fear. We're just doing this uh, in, in a matter of seconds. In a split second, we're, we're just evaluating the situation as we pull up. And we may park uh, strategically also. You may say, why is that police car out by the street in front of the 7-Eleven? There's been many cases where police officers have you know parked their car out of sight in the back off to the side. And then without, uh, you know, the robbers, without paying attention, they come into the location to uh, pull a robbery. And what happens is there's a shooting situation that might have been avoided if we put that police car out, you know, so that it's easily seen by every, anybody driving by. First of all, if they see the police car and they need help, they can stop right there and go and contact the officer. Uh, if they're a robber, a, a bad guy, they're going to see that police car and they're probably... Uh, they're not going to go in. And that's not going to be the location where they're going to pull a robbery. And another reason is so that the public sees you're out there, you know, doing your job, you're interacting with the people. Even if you're stopping for a cup of coffee, hey, you're out in the public available to, uh, to engage in conversation, to be seen, to be contacted. So that's another. But we do it with tactics, right? When we pull up into a situation we're going to meet, we take an immediate assessment, and we get so habituated in doing that that we don't pay attention that we're doing it we just do it automatically so self-awareness man that's the foundation and i wrote down some notes here it's the foundation of personal safety before entering any public building take a moment familiarize familiarize yourself with your surroundings know where you are and be aware of the physical location if you don't know the address at least kind of take note you know i'm at the corner of a and b if something happened and, it, and chaos ensues and you got to call 9 11 you it that that knowledge may escape you may escape you unless you take conscious note and always kind of note to yourself this is where i'm at self awareness number 2 is the situational awareness right that's kind of goes just being aware of your surroundings as you, as you walk up to the building do what police officers do take note hey is it all of a sudden you notice and you can do this in a split second. No one's going in and out of the building. 
maybe take a look inside before you enter, right? I mean, you might be walking into an active shooter or a robbery or one about to occur. Of course, this is rare. This is probably never going to happen. It doesn't mean you can't be aware of your situation and your surroundings. Pay attention to the people walking in and out. Not in a paranoia way, but just as someone who is self-aware and you're situationally aware of what's going on, going on as you enter a building, a public place, or a location. Because we, we now know over the last few years, this can happen anywhere. We know it can happen right in a bowling alley, in a restaurant, in a big box store, in a church, in a school. So we, it, there's no longer a safe zone where this is not going to happen. But we can do little things and habituate those, those habits so that we can up the percentage chance that we would survive if we happen to get caught in an, act, in an active shooter situation. And we're going to be in a defensive situation right off the bat because most of us are not going to be armed. We are going to be outgunned from the beginning. And we really are not uh, going to want to be in an armed confrontation uh, with this active shooter in most situations. So now we're self-aware. We're situationally aware. Now, location familiarity, this is something we can do, and you can have habituate this, and you can get in the practice of doing it, and it can be kind of fun. You can do it with the family, right? You're in a grocery store. And just don't blindly walk around with your cart, right? Just, just kind of take notice of where the entry and exit points are, right? So you, you see the young man or young lady bringing out some produce from the back. She's got a cartload of milk. Hey, take notice. Okay, there's the door where if I have to escape to the back of this store— that's where I'm going to go, right? Okay, in most cases, that's going to be, that's not uh, where the public goes. That's uh, depending on the situation off limits. In an active shooter, there is nothing off limits. That's going to be an escape route. And if we're aware of that, shots start getting fired. And if we're alone or with family, we grab family and we go right to that place because we want to get to the back. In most cases, the active shooter is coming through the front and we can have tunnel vision as to that's our, where we want to go to to escape. Probably not the best place to try to escape. We don't know how many shooters there are, and we don't want to go into that funnel of death towards the shots. So the back door, specifically like a grocery store, that's going to be an escape route because we know, right, because we see the produce coming out from there. What do we know if, you've, if we've worked in a grocery store? How does that produce get delivered? At the back door, a truck pulls up and brings it all in. What's going to happen if we get to that back room of that grocery store? We're going to be able to find that emergency exit, and we're going to be able to escape. we got to try to escape as fast as possible in an active shooter situation. And the one that, we, that happened today in Maine, this person was a militarily trained uh, sharpshooter. He was a gun range instructor. This person is going to be very proficient at taking out people and killing we got to get out of that death funnel and zone as fast as possible. Like I said from the beginning, probably never going to happen. Uh, unlikely, but we can see more and more of these things happen. And it doesn't matter. It's not just in a big city situation. So let's be street survival oriented. We can survive this by taking small steps mentally. So we got self-awareness, situation awareness, location familiarity. Now pre-planning. Pre-planning is something we can do in the location. goes along with local lo location awareness. Okay, if somebody came in the front now and started shooting, pop, 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 immediately I'm going to go in this door or that door because I know that's going to lead me to the back, the back of the grocery store where things are delivered, where I know I'm going to have an exit point. Instead of blindly running to the front or just hitting the floor, leaving yourself open, to maybe an active shooter who's going aisle by aisle and he's shooting and killing people. We are not going to want to just be in place. Uh, you know, I mean, the situation calls for it. Maybe getting down on the ground is going to be the best situation. But initially, and if we pre-plan mentally, a lot of this, as we see, is physical awareness of where we are, is location awareness. And now in our preparedness and saying, if something happens, I'm going to go here. We also want to be mentally prepared. And that's part of our pre-planning, mental preparedness. Hey, if it kicks in, you know, right now I'm the uh, noble, friendly American citizen. Hi, how are you? And an active shooter, all bets are off and I'm going to survive. 
and maybe I'm going to help others survive, but I already have pre-planned where the entry and exit points are in this place, and I'm going to immediately switch into survival mode. And that's what we do as cops when we go to street survival training. We, are, we often practice what we called in our mental preparedness, we, ha we, uh, we use colors, right? So let's say blue is the lowest uh, alertness for being ready to take action and go into survival mode. So maybe we're in the station and, or in our car as we pull up to the station. And, you know, we're in the briefing room. We're in the police station. The lowest, really, a low threat level. We could be in blue. Uh, let's say we're out in the field and we're, we're assisting an elderly lady across the street. And uh, we're smiling, we're friendly, but you know what? Mentally, we're in orange. Orange because orange is close to red. Red is I'm drawing my weapon and I'm saving my life and those around me by in to immediately into, uh, in, into a combat zone. I'm in a combat zone, red. But we as police officers, many times we would be in orange. You wouldn't know it, but we know mentally we're just one click away from being in red. And it's not something that has to be exhausting mentally. That we're, we're, uh, we're, we're jittery aware. This is just mental preparedness for what might happen. Mental rehearsing. If something goes bad, this is what I'm going to do. And so I do this right to this day. And it can be kind of a fun thing as you go into a store, you go into a restaurant, and uh, you just play these games with yourself and or your family as a preparedness as a preparedness game, this is what we would do if this happened. And so we go forth with courage, not with fear, but smartness, tactics, strategies to survive an active shooter in the unlikely event that we get caught up in this situation. We have done some things that, that take seconds. It takes seconds to, as you drive up, just habitually decide parking in a, in a strategic location. Just scanning the front of the store before we walk in kind of looking at who's going in and out of the store. You wouldn't know that you're, people wouldn't know that you're doing this. You're just mentally running through this in a millisecond. And it can save our lives. And it might have to. Unlikely event doesn't mean we don't prepare for it. So street survival tactics for us, more important than ever nowadays because of the defunding of the police, the the response that we in an active shooter there's no time there's a gap in time between the shooting which may only take 15 to 20 seconds to wipe out 10 12 people and the time the police can actually get there assess and get ready to enter a situation so that's it everybody and let's go over these things real quick as what we just learned and you're going to practice these starting today when you go out in public start to habituate these thought processes, self-awareness, self where am I, my physical location, where I'm going to park, situation awareness, I'm going into a big box store, scan the front, watching people go in and out, does it seem to be business as usual, situation aware, location awareness, right, location familiarity, okay, I came in the front door, this is where the front door is, I'm going to go to the bathroom, what's back here? Oh, here's an exit point. Are there any other exit points? Oh, on the other side of the store, where the re there's exit points over here also. I see people coming out with product, right? Oh, okay, so that's a back room through that door where they get deliveries. I'm probably going to be able to get to the outside if I go through this door and then be able to exit the building. And then pre-planning, everybody, pre-planning mentally, saying, you know what, if this happens, let's do this. It doesn't have to be some kind of fear-mongering thought process. Hey, let's just talk about this when we go in. You can do two things when you're at a dinner with, with, with friends before you have a cheers and make a prayer. Hey, guys, what happens if something went down right now? Where would we go? What would we do? I'm looking at the front door right now. If someone came in with a gun, listen, let's just, we're going to all go this way. There's the kitchen, and through the kitchen is probably the back where the exit door is. You know, and maybe you have maybe you have a safe word. If you say this word, no time to talk about what's happening. Follow me. We're exiting. Go, go, go. These are things you should practice with family, with kids. I know it shouldn't be this way, but it is this way. These things are happening. 
Street survival tactics, man. Pre-planning to survive an active shooter situation. These are strategies that we can use, everybody. Hey, and that's, that is the podcast episode this week. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video with somebody who, if this resonates with you, share this with somebody who might need to hear it, that it might help, and watch again. Hey, and if you're listening on a podcast platform, hey, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Like it. It tells the computer people are inter interacting with the show, and they will show it to more people. That's the Cliff Yates Show, everybody. You know I love you. Goodbye.